Hi, and welcome back to First Year Microeconomics. In this presentation, we're going to look at a second example of comparative statics. Just to remind you, comparative statics considers how our price predictions change when something else changes. In the last presentation, we looked at changes that affected or shifted the demand curve. This presentation is going to look at a change that shifts the supply curve. Just to remind you of the definition, a supply curve answers the question, given the price, how much would sellers like to sell, holding everything else constant. When we drew our supply curve, we held fixed the price of the inputs that the sellers used, the technology that the sellers had access to, and the expectations that were held by the sellers. If we change any of these three things, that's going to shift the supply curve. So our comparative static analysis is going to ask how does the equilibrium price and quantity change in a market when there is a change in the price of inputs or a change in technology or a change in sellers expectations. Each of those will shift the supply curve and alter our predicted price and our predicted quantity. For our example, we're going to look at a rise in the price of an input. We're going to look at the electricity industry. First, some background information. Coal is used to power electricity generation plants. Starting from about 2004, China went from being a coal exporter to being a coal importer. Growth in China meant that there was an increased demand in China for electricity and China had to increase its imports of coal to produce the electricity for its economy. But that increased demand for coal pushed up the world price of coal, including the price in Australia. Again, if you don't see that, sit down, draw a demand and supply curve for coal on the world market and think about what would happen if there was a rightward shift in the world demand curve for coal because of increased demand for China. You'll see that the equilibrium price of coal will rise. That's our starting point for our example. So let's see what effect the increase in the price of coal had for the electricity market in Southeast Australia. On the vertical axis, we're going to have the price of electricity. That's going to be in dollars per megawatt hour. And down here on the horizontal axis, we're going to have the quantity of electricity. Before the price of coal goes up, so at our initial equilibrium, we will see that demand and supply cross at a price of $60 per megawatt hour and a consumption of about 4,000 megawatt hours per day. The increase in the price of coal, however, means that there will be a leftward shift in the supply curve for electricity. At any given price of electricity, say $80 per megawatt hour, the amount of electricity that suppliers would like to sell given that price is going to be lower. Why? Because the cost of producing the electricity has gone up and that means that the supply curve is going to shift back to the left. You're not going to be able to make as much money selling electricity, so for any price of electricity, you're going to wish to or like to sell less electricity. So the rise in the input price, the rise in the price of coal, is going to shift the supply curve from our original supply curve S0. It will shift the supply curve to the left, and we've drawn that as our new supply curve S1. What does that do to our equilibrium price and quantity? Well, our original equilibrium was here where demand crosses supply originally, S0. Now, however, we're on supply curve S1, so our equilibrium has moved up to here. What does that mean for price and quantity? Notice that as the supply curve has shifted to the left, our new equilibrium price is higher for electricity, but our equilibrium quantity is lower. The rise in the price of coal has led to a higher price of electricity because coal is an input to producing electricity, but has led to a lower quantity of electricity being transacted 
on the market in Southeast Australia. In the last two presentations, we've seen some examples of what we've called comparative statics. We've looked at the rise in a price of a substitute, what happened to the demand for apples when the price of bananas rose. We've looked at a change in taste by buyers, what happens when Oprah Winfrey sets mad cow disease frenzy loose in the United States. And in this presentation, we looked at a rise in input price. What happens to the price of electricity in Australia when the world price of coal goes up? We could look at lots more examples. We could look at the fall in the price of a substitute. We could look at a rise or fall in the price of a complement. We could think about what happens if there's a rise in income or a fall in income. We can look at a change in expectations for a product. There's many more examples that you can look at on the demand side and you should practice these. And similarly, on the supply side, we've looked at an increase in input prices. But what happens if there's a decrease in an input price? What happens if there's a change in technology? Or what happens if there's a change in expectations? We can also ask what happens if there's more than one change at a time? What happens if the price of a substitute goes up and that affects the demand side? But at the same time, there's a change in technology that affects the supply side. And we can look at what happens over time when something else changes. Analyzing these type of changes is grist for the mill for microeconomists. Making predictions about what happens in markets when there are complex changes over time is what microeconomists do. So we're going to be spending a lot of time looking at these type of changes in the next few presentations. But there's one type of change we haven't looked at yet, and that's a change in government policy. And that's going to be the focus of our next few presentations.